Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Christian Mati. I'm head of uh, strategic research uh, at Climate Cake. Uh, I have been working uh, uh, for several years in um, this kind of battles between science, policy, and practice to make some concepts as system innovation and sustainability transitions happen in the ground. And for doing so, we we have explored the different set of skills and competence that we need to work at systemic level. Um, my presentation is going to be uh, very much on bringing some kind of provocations about what are the key questions that we need to face in terms of this challenge of moving green and, and digital and providing an example about what is the expectations about the transformation that we are uh, expecting to happen. So if we can have the next slide, please. So um, the big challenge is understanding what systemic innovation is, sta is state for in terms of being uh, inclusive and transformative and also uh, incorporating other challenges as digitalization and new governance configuration. So what actually means being green systemic and digital transformation? So we need to start from very simple concepts. So next slide, please. So we are very much used to have footloose conversations. This is the way that has been organized in society and policy in different departments and different ministries. So we can have a climate discussion, industry, innovation, research and science, and society was kind of playing a role more as a kind of a responsive rather than active. Obviously, other topics as energy and agricultural issues has been uh, taking very much as a kind of more specialized, sophisticated elements. So the challenge of becoming green and systemic means that we need to integrate this as part of a transformation in the system by looking at how all these elements are interconnected. That's the only way that we can achieve a radical transformation, like rethinking the way these elements work together. So next slide, please. So the opportunities that we have is that this society is already very much engaged in this kind of systemic discussion. So systemic innovation in general means like we just rethink the way that we work and the different components and the relation of the system. And one concrete example is smart specialization as a kind of a concept that say us how we can understand much better our strengths and recombine those strengths into something that can bring more value to our regional development. A hot topic right now is cyclical economy, and it's a good excuse to learn the systemic innovation. Uh, Obviously, it has the specific elements about circularity, but really push the idea about reconnecting the different elements in a different way. Last but not least, the digital economy. I think we still need to understand what does it mean moving uh, forward to just thinking about apps and just knowledge digitalizations. It means a different way to work together and in a different location and a different practice. So for doing so, it's not just we just jump and we just switch on uh, uh, something and you just we just press a button. It's a, it's a process in which we need to engage in designing new things. Next slide, please. So prototyping, co-design and collaboration used to be a fancy word, but now it's the reality. We need to engage all these kind of actors and all this kind of process in the kind of the new process that we need to set in order to be transformative. And this is not a kind of a biblic type of uh, expression. The reality is that we really take a risk if the people that need to be uh, in the discussion are not in the table, because the other people will see how uh, um, the risk of not having the right people are going to affect the, the discussion. Uh, so prototyping, co-design and collaboration now is kind of a backbone of making it systemic, because we really need to uh, include the different elements and components in order to make it happen. Next slide, please. The truth is that now the context is that we have the multi-level governance configuration. We have all these commitments from the SDGs, the COVID, the um, Paris Agreement, the Green Deal, and all of them needs to work together. And that's part of the logic of the policy mix that has been 
very broadly discussed during the last 10 years about how we combine local, regional, national, and even global discussion as part of this discussion. This full set of, 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 uh, of element is part of the challenge of being green and being systemic. Uh, so the, the key question is, can we just use the same practices and skills to face this challenge? Was probably the answer is no. So next slide, please. Next slide. Mati. Yes. Uh, we need to close, I was told. That, uh... Okay. Okay. So the idea is that uh, um, we cannot use the same uh, knowledge on, uh, and only integrate and combine. We just need to, uh, to think that we need to move beyond digital tools. We need to, to see how this is, uh, there is an emphasis on citizen engagement. What does it mean? And we need to incorporate a kind of a systemic approach uh, in terms of the new practices, cross-sectoral, cross-ministerials, and even cross-level type of uh, uh, activities are new as part of the practice that we need. So I'm just going to move to the next slide and I'm going to finish there as a kind of a provocation. Can we move to the next slide, please? Yes. So to better understand the knowledge that we need to produce in order to face uh, uh, this, um, this challenge and supporting the decision making, we need to think about what is actually actionable knowledge and how we can make it effective. So as you can see in, in, in the figure, there are a collection of new competence that we need to address. And I was listening to the last uh, a panel about smart specialization, and there was this issue about uh, data. Uh, um, data for monitoring, but data for decision making, but also for prototyping and understanding how we can move to new actions. So uh, the challenge goes really beyond combining what we know. It's very much about understanding that working together in this way required like to rethink the skill set that we need in order to uh, be systemic green and also incorporate all the benefits that uh, the digital economy can bring in terms of like making the data and the knowledge more accessible for everyone, not just for citizens and policymakers, but also for, for business and uh, education. Uh, so that being said, uh, I hope that this can help to, to, to inspire a little bit the discussion about rethinking the skill set that we need. Uh, for uh, um, the transformation into green, digital, and um, entrepreneurial economy. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Christian, for this inspiring presentation. So it is all about interconnection, is collaboration, and about making sense of uh, of data and the uh, and the interaction among uh, uh, people and institutions. And now we part, uh, we go quickly to our second panelist, uh, Marie-José from Technica, who will give us uh, uh, practical examples of how we can put these things in practice. So, Marie-José, can you tell us what you have done in Technica? Okay. Hello and good morning, everybody. I had some technical problems before, so I hope you can hear me and say to me. Uh, on behalf of Technica, it's a pleasure to be here with you this morning, sharing my work uh, related with bioscience and sustainability area in Technica. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me and offering me this, uh, this opportunity to show the work that we do. Uh, Technica is a center promoted by the Deputy Ministry of Vocational Education and Training on the Education Department of the Basque Government. We work on innovation uh, for vocational, educational, technical centers and the business fabric in the files of, you can see in the first slide, we have different areas or different departments here in Technica. The first one is related with technical innovation and intelligent system. The second one is complexity management. The third one is related with learning and high performance. The fourth is related with internationalization. 
We have a department, uh, we work with apply innovation in strategic settings, and our area is the bioscience and sustainability. So we work to may apply research and innovation to backbone of back country vocational educational training to reduce the competence gap from the start of the idea of a te uh, technology until it's applied in a small and medium sized companies. Uh, our principal aim is to transfer all the knowledge that we create here in Technica with collaboration with all the vocational educational training centers in the Basque Country. Uh, please, the second slide. Again, please. Okay, so our principal aim is the sustainable human development. Three words that define the way that we work in Technica, towards to do a better world. So we think uh, the education is the only direction for teaching and learning for the future we want. So let me explain uh, what we do with some examples. You use technology in the applied research we do, and of course we do so sustainable because we are responsible for the planet that we give to our children. Most important is focusing on humanity. So we have, as uh, I told you before, three different lines of work. Uh, as you can see, the first one is related with agrofood, natural and ocean environment. In this work, in this line, we work in a bioeconomics network with different vocational educational training schools. We have changed our working, and nowadays we do multidisciplinary projects with the students and teachers from different professional family and activities working together on projects related, as you can see, the use of drones, the circular economy, agrofood, among others. In the center, you can see the second line. The second line is related with sustainable construction. This morning we um, heard a, a lot about timber construction and construction in general. Here, wood and furniture industries, green and civil construction, electronics, electricity, and of course, community services, very important. All work together in order to approach the construction projects, development, and humanistic technology that people need at home, at work, and work so on. And the third line, in the right, you can see related with health, environment, and biotechnology. In this half, we are very focused on biotechnology and aging in order to improve people's well-being. Let me show you some examples that we are working with students in the next slide. Next slide, please. Marie-José, uh, we have to finish in one minute. Okay, yeah. Here you can see some examples. Uh, culinary schools, uh, food industry schools, uh, dietetic schools, agrarian schools are working together. In the center, you can see around a table different specialties related with construction. Uh, we have been able to build a miniature, a tiny house and elderly people that came vocational training schools are talking with the students. Uh, so we work technology, we work sustainability, and we work together. The timber uh, project in the last slide is the example two. So next slide, please. We work here, uh, the timber construction, promoting the timber construction, as you can see, promoting the local timber and local forest with institution, with different activities in the vocational, education, and training schools, as well as training in the different points uh, of this value chain with the purpose of contributing the medium and long term in promise the, the wood and timber industry. So thank you very much. I thank you very much. It was really interesting, and I really hope that uh, uh, our participants uh, uh, will be able to be in touch with Technica so that this knowledge that you have uh, developed uh, be shared uh, with others too and inspire others. Thank you very much, both of you, for your contributions. And I pass the floor to Suzanne to go to okay. the next session.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Also, a thank you uh, from my side. And I really look forward to continue the discussion in the breakout rooms after the after the coffee break, where I will be leading the one on going green and being digital. And there's indeed a lot to exchange on and also to involve our participants on how they would like to cooperate in these areas. But as, as the time is a challenge in this uh, well-packed session, I would just now immediately go to the next area of our session, the new area for in Network, which is entrepreneurship. And uh, I would like just to make clear that despite this area was not listed in the registration form for the conference, indeed, this will be a priority area from this onwards. And uh, we are actually to see that there's a particular large interest of the participants to be part of the breakout groups after the coffee break relating to entrepreneurship. But not to take up any further time, with pleasure now, I give the online floor to my colleague, Maria Vittoria Galapi, who will be facilitating the next panel discussion. Over to you, Maria Victoria. Thank you, Susanna. Good morning, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you today. And let's move immediately to the Entrepreneurial Tibet Center. What is it? What is it about? How far is it different from what we know? Of course, the Entrepreneurial Training Center um, relies and is inspired by the concept of entrepreneurship as a key competence which has to do with business startup, but not only, is much broader, is very much in line uh, with innovation, with creativity, and with making value out of the ideas of everybody in the society, be it the youngsters, be it the civil society, be it the public administration. Not all the enterprises are left with creativity and innovation. So without uh, uh, elaborating too far for now on theoretical terms, uh, let's see a country and a country experience where this concept has been put in place. And I mean here to give the floor to Tunisia, where two years ago, together with the Ministry of Vocational Education and Training, we started a very interesting uh, pathway to set up and consolidate entrepreneurial TVET centers. So I would like to ask my colleague from Tunisia, Mr. Mustafa Lakeal, from the, Minister, from the Tunisian Agency of Vocational Education and Training, why, why Tunisia went for entrepreneurial TVET centers. While uh, Mustafa takes the floor, I invite all participants to look at the chat where you will find the deliverables of the Tunisian experience together with a short concept note with initial reflections of what an entrepreneurial Tibet center is about. Mustafa, are you with us? Oui, oui, merci. Bonjour. Yes. Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, merci. everyone. Thank you, Maria Vittoria, for uh, presenting thus the experience that we're currently rolling out in Tunisia. We are currently uh, developing uh, this uh, Center for Entrepreneurship in Tunisia. I wanted to stress the fact that this uh, approach draws upon uh, human capital. We have uh, tried to uh, think outside of the box and not think only about performance uh, as something being productive, but as performance in a holistic way. And we believe uh, uh, that uh, uh, performance relies on human capital and not uh, on a set of structures. So we talk about skills for individuals that we try uh, to then roll out within an organization. We work in a framework of co-creation. Uh, we believe uh, uh, that uh, it is important to address this uh, co-creation process. And this co-creation process has enabled us uh, to better foster entrepreneurship. 
And I believe this is the innovative approach that we have. This is the framework we are currently developing for our entrepreneurship center. There are a number of reasons for which Tunisia chose that approach. We have been working with the ETF since 2015. Oui. Ah, d'accord, encore une minute. Donc, nous travaillons de, avec ETF depuis... 2000. We have been collaborating with the ETF since 2015 on entrepreneurship. Nous avons développé euh, tout un processus et nous considérons que euh, ce processus doit être couronné par... We believe that this uh, process uh, should lead to the implementation of uh, new uh, bodies fostering entrepreneurship and specifically it needs to lead to the creation of new companies so we have been working on a vocational training in that regard and in order to foster this approach we must ensure that VET centers are part of the entrepreneurship ecosystem and we should also ensure that these uh, centers are value drivers in the different regions where they are implanted. It's a challenge for Tunisia. And one of the main challenges is to transform governance that is mostly turned on uh, employers and unions. We should now look to civil society, the youth, uh, funding bodies, uh, in order to bring together every stakeholder in uh, the entrepreneurship ecosystem Merci. on the Tunisian territory. Désolé, Mustafa. Yes. Sorry, Mustafa. The situation is quite complex. We have to respect the time that is given to us. So we will uh, address this during the workshop. And uh, we will look at uh, the future for such an approach down the line in the workshop. To uh, what we did in Tunisia as a basis for inspiration for our partnership under the COVID. Um, and I would like to invite Elin, who is uh, an expert in entrepreneurial entrepreneurship as a key competence. We work together, as Mustafa said, in a co-design mood in Tunisia, co-design approach. What did, did we develop, uh, Elin? What are the key dimensions of uh, an entrepreneurial TVET center? Thank you. Three Thank minutes. Thank you, Madhya Editoria. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? Great, thank you very much. Now, I was very pleased to be involved in this. Um, this was all about trying to understand really and demystify the different elements that, that relate to the development of how we can be more entrepreneurial as a vet center. And really, this was a process where we spoke, we discussed, we really interacted with a number of different vet centers across Tunisia, supported by the government and the um, agency for vocational education and training and other colleagues to co-create 100% online because we were in just starting when um, the COVID uh, the pandemic hit. And so we led online co-creation meetings, really consulting across the sector in Tunisia to understand what they saw as the key factors making each center more entrepreneurial. And what it really came down to is we could see that it was all about people, people within the ecosystem that we needed to engage, support, capacity build, inform, really to bring them together in, in a vision of what an entrepreneurial vet center can be and how that can be implemented by the people involved in this ecosystem. So within the circle that you see here on the screen, you can see that we're looking at leadership. We're looking at the leaders and the managers. We're looking at the stakeholders, the ecosystem around the vet center. You can see that we're looking at the staff, not only trainers, but also 
pedagogical staff and administrative staff, and we're looking at the learners. And when you look across this, you see that this is about engaging, informing and supporting them to come together to truly understand their own capacity to take this forward, to contribute, to work together towards an entrepreneurial vision for this Bet Center, but also then to deliver this through how they work. Now, for leaders, we can see that this is about setting a culture across the institution that everybody can be part of, listening. Also, of course, looking at the ways in which they can be entrepreneurial, income generation, supporting the development, the strategy of an institution. When we look at stakeholders and ecosystem, we see them as being a partner in the skills development of a region or a, nat or a, a national entity, but it's looking at their active participation across then entrepreneurial training and learning, looking at them being involved in the design, the development, the delivery, perhaps the assessment of that training and education in order to bring them into the process. Because ultimately, often TVET is about supporting our learners to really go into the labor market and support these stakeholders, these businesses, this ecosystem to thrive economically and socially. When we look at staff, we the, the feedback from our colleagues in Tunisia is very much that we need to help people to understand these active pedagogies that we're talking about. We need to listen, ensure that their voice is heard as part of the institution and its entrepreneurial development and to train them on how to deliver entrepreneurial learning within each subject, every program within an institution, as well as around that. I have one minute. No, less. Ten seconds. Okay. And then we have learners, developing learners and helping them to understand the power of these competences, entrecomp competences, and supporting them to recognize and develop that through their careers. And this can be an inspiration, a starting point for the development of an NA pillar for the Entrepreneurial TVET Center. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aline. And sorry, uh, we went a bit uh, quickly, but in the working group, we will go a bit more in detail. Already this diagram gives us the flavor of the richness of our work so far, of the several dimension of this holistic approach that we co-developed in a completely digital way last year. Thank you. So this is Tunisia, it's already a lot, but what can we do more and better also in the framework of the NA network? And to try to answer these questions, I would like to give the floor to Dana Redford, who is a consultant in entrepreneurship and a professor with a particular angle on technology. So Dana, uh, we heard about the beauty of Tunisia, but what more and better can we do to make an entrepreneurial TVET center? Three minutes, thanks. Well, good morning to everybody. And uh, I just wanted to thank uh, the ETF team and, and also say what I think is a very fruitful exchange between what is going on in Europe in the coves, which I've been uh, had the privilege to be involved with. Uh, so I, I really appreciate Jose Manuel uh, uh, and um, and Georgios and, and you, um, Maria Vittoria, for this opportunity. Um, I think that uh, there is lots that we can learn. Uh, we have some excellent best practices uh, in Europe, um, led in the Netherlands uh, by Bodwin, who's here, and, and also in Italy by Paolo Nardi, and, and uh, we can really reflect. And, and also, I think the experiences... Tunisia very for what uh, Joan Santos and, and everybody is doing in, in Europe. Yes. Um, so uh, exploring in terms of the, the potential, I think that uh, we need to recognize the student and uh, the student's role is, is key. We need to be able to uh, be branding around the student. We need to have the student and the employer understand that uh, it's really key that this is a signal to the market uh, we can think about it is looking at um, uh, how the student is 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 the value has to be driven to the student the next thing i would say is that uh, we need to build on what has been a, a, an extremely interesting uh, experiment uh, in terms of uh, the covid uh, and moving online with digital skills 
Uh, Ellen touched on the ecosystem. I think this is key. This is one of the things that the Coves actually uh, does, and I think is most exciting for the development of entrepreneurship, is how in the Coves you have this interaction uh, of, um, of the local ecosystem and entrepreneurship. So connecting those dots uh, is key. In terms of uh, entrepreneurial learning, uh, we really need to change the way that teachers are teaching. And this is, this is actually a, a key uh, issue and, and also go through the process of passing through each step and trying to oh become uh, better in, in each moment. Um, in terms of uh, fostering uh, entrepreneurial TVET, uh, one of the areas in which I've focused on is, uh, is, is ecosystems. And here we talk about in, in engaging uh, stakeholders, uh, looking at who are the champions, who are the conveners. And this is something that, uh, that oh. Ellen touched on as well. Um, and finally, I would say that it's uh, about access points and intersections. These are key aspects of how an ecosystem works, as well as the stories that people tell. And this is something that's key in terms of how you can market and understand and get more uh, both students and teachers and institutions involved. And finally, I would just make one small note, which is to expect the unexpected. In work that I did in Angola for uh, the United Nations, uh, actually the teachers became more entrepreneurial. So we really have some wonderful things that we can learn uh, from all of these situations. It's a pleasure to learn from, uh, from, from Tunisia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, the three uh, panelists that have been very short. <laughs> uh, we will continue in the working groups, but uh, so what I, I can take away um, is that uh, entrepreneurial vet centers are about changing the culture in the centers and changing it for everybody, not just the teachers, but also the school directors with a strong focus on the learners, be it in initial training, be it in lifelong learning perspective. It has also to do with governance. So a different governance, not only employers are important, but also the community, the civil society around the center and every citizen around the center. So governance is an important aspect of an entrepreneurial TVET center. And of course, a different way of teaching and learning, a different way of assessing entrepreneurship as a key competence. So thank you very much and see you later in the working groups. Back to you, Suzanne. Thank you very much, Maria Vitoria. And also I thank you from my side to our three panelists for sharing viewpoints, insights, and experience on what it takes to facilitate the entrepreneurial spirit, the entrepreneurial culture in, in TVET systems and in TVETs. Um, I will not take up further time. I think we should jump directly now to the last and third part of this session, a new area to be introduced in the inner network. This is social inclusion. And with pleasure, I give the online floor to my colleague leader Kita, who will lead us through the last panel discussion on social inclusion. So leader, please, over to you. Hello everybody from uh, Tel Aviv. What you see is the Mediterranean beach last week. Today is a stormy day in Tel Aviv. We had a strong rain tonight, but you can see the Mediterranean beach is beautiful. Okay, spring is coming. Hello everybody. Th thank you very much, Linda, to give us opportunity to discuss a very important thing, which is all the aspects of vocational and excellence and innovation center, which comes to the social periphery and inner city. The COVID put something in a very strong contrast. And we know it, that the social periphery and the inner city suffered much more than those who had much more resilience and grit in this time. Israel, as a startup uh, nation, as a startup culture, uh, we had a, a, a big challenge here, not to, to lose hope in these areas of inner cities and, and, and the uh, social periphery. So we took, I will say, five steps, which I'll describe very, very shortly. One is we didn't give up, especially in the periphery. We continue to, to make linkage between the startup and the high-tech high industry to our school. Secondly, we created virtually a bi-directional relationship between startupists, high-tech engineers, and teachers and mentors and students. Thirdly, 
we continued to operate within the COVID. Our, you know, our school innovation centers, we didn't give up. We said, let's continue to work with capsules, with small groups, afternoon, virtually, so the students still will have the ability to dream, to think about the future and not to give up within all the hardship that was there and loneliness within the COVID. Fourth is we created young innovators. This is a really big initiative in the inner city and periphery. Those students who can really dream and put up some real projects in a PBL approach and to come out with fantastic ideas, mainly which relates to social change, is to work with teachers, to change the role of teacher. The teacher must be a mentor, mentally, socially, but also as a, as a hope deliverer, as a hope uh, giver to young people. Paolo? Hello. Hi, Lida. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of slides just to, to share what we are doing in our uh, GIVE project. As you see from the slide, it's the, based on the experience of some vet centers, companies, universities, uh, where the main idea is that um, a vet center cannot be inclusive if it doesn't provide an excellent training, but at the same time, uh, excellence is not excellent if exclude anybody. So please, next slide. What we are going to do actually is first of all, based on our experience, to consolidate this experience into practice, which can be transferable, shareable through uh, Europe, but also beyond. Uh, as you have seen in, in the short movie, we in, have five European countries involved, but also Tunisia and also Belarus. And the main pillar of these experiences where, uh, of course, we uh, mean inclusion, not only for people with disability or learning disability, but also with fragility, any kind of disadvantage. This is real inclusion. The main pillar is to have the learner at the center. The learner at the center means that we have to change our approach to uh, have a more holistic TVET provision, and at the same time to involve all the relevant stakeholders to provide a really inclusive and excellent training. So it means to work at least at three levels. The first one at educational and didactic level. One size fits all doesn't work anymore. So we need to think a different way, personalization, but also we have listened to the other speakers, not only technical and professional skills, but also social emotional learning, general skills. Uh, actually, we, we, have, we say we have to uh, educate people, not just train future employees. But to do that, to change that at the very uh, concrete level, we need to change the mindset of TVET leaders. So we need to change TVET centers, or, as also Maria Vittoria and Dana were saying in the previous chapter, we need more flexible, agile organizations open to hybrid solutions like business education solutions, the uh, ETASI model in the Basque Country, the school enterprise model in our school Cometa, and so on and so forth. Finally, governance. We need to move from a school-centered vision to activate learning ecosystems, which means, of course, companies, but also families and uh, uh, policymakers, research institutions. We need to rethink teacher education. So this is what we are going to work with our great partners in the GIFT project in order to create, to identify practices, to create tools which can be discussed and shared with other uh, TVET centers in Europe and beyond with a strong scientific framework. And of course, the ambition is to create indeed a platform and a community of practice for all those interested in this uh, inclusive excellence approach.